Hi, this is Dr. Jim Anderson, and I'd like to welcome you to Making Restless Legs History. I'm really excited to give this presentation to you today because this is something that we've been doing for quite a while, actually, about six or seven years. And we've been making it history for many people, and we feel like we are making history in the world of, of how do you help people with restless legs. So one thing I will say is I would bet that probably 99 or 99.9% .9 of you have no idea what we're doing. This is probably going to be a very new concept for most of you. But, uh, you know, I've been in practice now for over 30 years, and by, by far this is probably uh, the one problem that uh, I'm very passionate about, and it's amazing how much this can affect your general health. So if you have severe restless legs, you can really understand how broadly it can affect you both mentally and psychologically. So I want to get started here, and we're going to talk about the five steps to saying goodbye to restless legs. So let's get started. So first of all, who is this for? This is for anyone whose life has been altered by restless leg syndrome. It is for those whose sleep is affected night after night, and for those who have been physically and mentally ruined by this problem. If you want to return to the life you once had, this webinar is for you. So in the next 45 minutes, you will learn how to get your night back with six to eight hours of restful, uninterrupted sleep every night. It's very possible, folks. How to get back the energy you once had so your emotional and physical well-being is vastly improved. How to greatly reduce or even get rid of all the medications you're taking for restless leg syndrome so you're not suffering from weight gain and, and other negative side effects or even possible addiction. And, you know, that's becoming very newsworthy. There are a lot of addiction problems that are going on uh, with people that are suffering from pain. And how can you feel normal again, not dreading long plane or car rides or trying to sit uncomfortably through an, a movie? How not to have to worry or be embarrassed anymore about dozing off in public places or worry about your inability to focus and be effective at work? So this is my promise to you, folks that by the end of this presentation, you will understand how restless legs can truly be reversed. Before we get started on the main part of the content, which is a lot of content, by the way, but it's good stuff. So I want to check in with you because we hear so many different stories from people and everybody's different, but there seems to be some, some common themes. So does this sound like you? Do you experience that anxious feeling in your legs that refuses to leave and every night you find your sleep is interrupted? Do you experience the repeated daily exhaustion your restless legs has caused? Do you secretly wonder, is it me? Am I the crazy one? Because no one understands what it's like. We hear that a lot from people that maybe have a spouse that doesn't understand or, or maybe they got the impression that the doctor they're talking to really doesn't understand the kind of suffering that they're they're going through. Are you concerned about all the weight that you've gained from the lack of sleep and the medication and the lack of exercise? Do you feel your emotional connection with your friends and family has suffered? Do you miss being able to enjoy sitting comfortably through a movie or in a car? Do you feel like the future holds no solution for your restless legs? Have you forgotten what normal life is like? Are you giving up on a solution? Basically, folks, are you giving up on hope? And as we go through this presentation, in several minutes, we're going to start showing you some case studies of people. And I know at least one or two of these were at that verge of giving up hope. We were like their last ditch effort. We were the ones that they searched for. They kept searching and their persistence paid off they finally found us so don't don't lose hope and if nothing else that i accomplish for you today it's going to be to give you renewed hope that you can have a more fulfilled and restored life and get rid of your restless legs so let's talk about the real problem i think the real problem is that you do not understand the shifts that are needed to get rid of your restless legs once you make them, you'll regain the energy you used to have by sleeping soundly through the night, every night. You'll enjoy again the simple pleasures of being able to sit comfortably through a movie or in cars 
and on plane rides. You'll have the energy to exercise and lose the weight you've gained and, and feel great again. You'll no longer think you're crazy and can quit spending time searching and searching for the elusive answer to your problem. You'll have more focus and engagement for your work and for the ones that you love. You'll be more social again, feeling great and more awake and involved. Because you can see restless leg affects you in so many different ways. So, so who am I? Well, I'm one of the first 40 doctors in the world to be specially trained to open tight nerve tunnels, what we call decompression surgeries that reverse the symptoms of neuropathy in both diabetics with neuropathy and non-diabetics. I was the first foot, foot and ankle surgeon to publish scientific, a scientific study reporting what I monitor in surgery that shows improvement of nerve function when tight nerve tunnels are opened. And we'll talk more about that in detail. My research, and that's in regards to neuropathy, by the way, my research provides compelling, consistent data to show that neuropathy can be reversed with decompression techniques. I present my research findings at national and international meetings and train other doctors on these decompression techniques. I'm a member and past president of the Association of Extremity Nerve Surgeons, an international organization that promotes collaboration and research in extremity nerve disease. I've successfully reversed the symptoms of restless legs for hundreds and hundreds of patients, and I'm one of the most experienced doctors in my field. Finally, the research that I have done was recently recognized by the Association of Extremity Nerve Surgeons. I was honored to be presented with the Jules Tunnell Award at their annual meeting. This award is for the scientific advancement of knowledge in regards to peripheral nerve disorders. Previous doctors who have been honored include Dr. Marie Samenow, a plastic surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic, who was the first American plastic surgeon to do face, a face transplant, and also Dr. Lee Dellen, a professor of plastic surgery and neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins, who pioneered the concept of nerve decompression procedures for diabetic and non-diabetic neuropathy. This award was very meaningful to me because you're recognized by your peers who include foot and ankle surgeons, plastic surgeons, and neurosurgeons. And finally, I'm the first surgeon to publish scientific research showing the reversal of restless leg syndrome when pressure on tight nerve tunnels in the legs is released. Now what you're seeing on the screen there is not the actual research paper, but it's an article about the research paper. And this was recently, recently published in Frontiers in Neurology. And we actually have another paper that's going to be coming out in probably two uh, to four months. Hopefully we'll have it published by then. So what, what are the five shifts? Well, there are five shifts in thinking that you must make in order to consider reversing restless leg syndrome once and for all. I'm going to walk you through all five of these shifts in this session. So here we go. What's the first one? Well, the first one is understanding there really is a way out. Don't, don't get a mental block and think that everybody's researched this and there's just no way because you're just not aware of it. Okay. You're not aware of it because what I do is not dominating what you're listening to or seeing. Okay. Yes, there is a way to rid your life of the restless legs that ruin your life. It's something that we do on a weekly basis. And like I say, it's nothing that's that new to us. And we've been actually experiencing this and helping people for approximately six to seven years. So you do have another option. So that's the first shift. Shift number two. Well, it's that conventional medicine does not have the answers. Conventional medicine and doctors say there's no known cause. You may find some relief with medications, but they are then but are then challenged with the side effects of potential addiction and eventual eventual ineffectiveness, and also having to continually increase your dose in some cases. These medications, and I, I really think you all know this, these medications in no way address the cause. Drug companies would love to continue to keep it that way. 
So you'll keep taking their medications. And it's interesting. When I look on the internet or, or look at what people are talking about or, or maybe in support groups, that's all I hear. It's probably seems to me 90% of it's about the various medication options. Okay. And there's, I guess there's nothing wrong with that, but you just, that's all you know. And that's all you've been presented. And so that's why I'm glad you're here. We're going to present another way to address this. So what's number three? Well, the third shift is what is the real cause of restless legs. First of all, you will need to understand that the cause lies elsewhere. It's in your legs themselves. Sounds kind of contradictory to me, actually, but, but that the, the problems that you're having are in the legs. And I'm trying to tell you that the symptoms are there and the problems there also, but conventional medicine will say, well, no, it's, it's not necessarily there. It's, it's a metabolic pathways, nutrition, anemia, etc., or in your, or in your brain. And it has to do with dopamine levels. And I challenge that folks, because we're able to reverse these symptoms very rapidly. And people are still restless leg for years later. So here's some evidence to show you otherwise. Think about this. It's a commonly known fact that if you have restless legs, there's a 50% chance that somebody else in your family will have restless legs. And probably a lot of you know that. So why would that be? Well, because there's a possibility that you have inherited a tendency to have excessive pressure on nerves in specific areas or what I call tight nerve tunnels. Think of it this way. If you have brown eyes, maybe your dad had brown eyes. I have blue eyes. Well, my dad had blue eyes. So why can't there be that potential for these nerve pathway structures to have the same issue? So I like to call this, the term we use is restless legs compression syndrome. Okay, so this is where conventional medicine is wrong. There are specific nerve branches in the lower extremity that when constricted then become damaged and these are the culprits. So let me show you. It's very simple. Compression on the nerve causes nerve damage, and then that causes your symptoms. Your, the jerking sensations that you have, the anxiousness that keeps you from sleeping. You have to get up and walk around all the time, or you can't sit in the car for maybe more than a couple hours. Okay, I even had one gentleman that was ripping up his bed sheets. He doesn't do that anymore, so he's saving some bills on his, on his sheets. So that is what's causing the symptoms. Again, compression, it's very simple. Compression on nerves causes the nerves to be damaged. It's unhealthy for them, and that causes your symptoms. So let's dig into compression to understand it even more. Imagine stepping on a garden hose. The flow of water, of course, is reduced. This is what a nerve under pressure experiences. The tunnels that, ner that nerves in the lower extremity go through can become tight in the same way that carpal tunnel syndrome does in the hands and wrist. And a lot of you've heard of carpal tunnel syndrome. Many of the nutrients necessary for a nurse to function flow from the back, specifically the lower back area, all the way down to the foot. There's a very technical term for it, but I'll just try to keep this simple. And all it is is proteins are created in the back and then they transport the nutrients down all the way through the nerves down to the tip of your toes. So imagine if that flow is blocked in any way, okay, it's going to impede the nutrients getting to the nerves. If along that nerve pathway there is a tight tunnel, the blood flow to the nerve is probably also reduced along with the nutrients are reduced along with oxygen. This re reduces the health of the nerve and it will cause symptoms. Much like putting a rope around your neck, it will become uncomfortable very soon. Could be a little bit of an exaggeration there, but you get my point. So again, a little diagram to help further explain this. Let's say the yellow is the nerve on the left. There's pressure on the nerve. It's going through a tunnel. We all have these tunnels, by the way. And with pressure being relieved, you can see to the right, there's going to be no compression now. There's no flow impedance, meaning the flow of nutrients can go back to the nerve and now the nerves are healthy and you have no RLS symptoms. Does that make sense? So let's continue. Why does conventional medicine not look elsewhere? This is huge, folks. I think this is the missing link. 
typical diagnosis is made via the symptoms that you share with your doctor. Okay, you go in, you see your doctor and say, doctor, well, I've got this funny feeling in my leg. It's getting worse. I can't sleep. I have to get up at night and move around and my legs are jerking. I can't sit in car for a long time. On and on. But the doctor then just says, well, I, I'm pretty sure that sounds like restless legs. And the doctor has been trained then to just pretty much say, hey, you know, from my knowledge, there's nothing that you can do. And oh, by the way, if it's really bad, we'll give you some medication or maybe later we'll give you medication. And they usually reach for their prescription pad or nowadays we use email. But nonetheless, the idea is it's just treated with medication. And that's it. So many of you have experienced that already. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that some of them might do sleep studies or they may do labs. And it, that gets a little bit more sophisticated, but it's still not really necessarily objective. You see, unlike a lot of other problems like high blood pressure, diabetes, if you have diabetes, you do a lab, your sugars are high, it's more objective. And what I'm trying to get at is this diagnosis is primarily made by what you say as a patient from your history, how it affects you. So that's what I'm explaining to you. But I think that's a little bit of the missing link because we have objective information to share with the rest of the medical world and you that there's something really going on in your legs. Okay. And in the 30, I would, I would say what this last bullet point is attempting to say is simply that I believe in the lower extremity, the nerve pathways and evaluating them and treating them is 30 years behind the, in the upper extremity. There's multiple nerve tunnels in the upper extremity and patients oftentimes have procedures done to relieve the symptoms in the upper extremity, but that's just not done in the lower extremity. We do it and, and other doctors may, not many, but, but it's not the commonly common way to do it. So here's the difference. It's through the exam. It's just simply the exam that we do oftentimes on people with, with restless legs. There's evidence of comp compression. Our neurological examinations show that people with restless legs have less than optimum nerve function. We see this all the time. They may not have, they may not feel pressure or sharpness on their skin as well as they should. There may be areas of the skin that are hypersensitive. There may be some numbness or even some slight muscle weakness. Our experience shows that rarely have any of you had a true nerve examination of the lower extremity. And you should find that interesting. I, I do too. <laughs> okay. So what we examine, we examine the nerve tunnels and this leads to the discovery of restless leg relief. There are five primary nerve tunnels below the knee that everybody is born with. Up until seven years ago, we evaluated and treated three tunnels for neuropathy, a related condition. Then, and listen close because this is important, then two additional tunnels were discovered. And when these were decompressed, along with one of the original three, the symptoms of restless legs reversed, a truly groundbreaking discovery. So I want to indulge you just a little bit and tell you my personal story about this pathway. If you go back 14 years, I was introduced to a doctor who was trained at Johns Hopkins as a plastic surgeon, neurosurgeon. And he basically trained me on doing decompression surgeries for neuropathy. So how he got involved with this, he had patients coming into him all the time. They were having restless, they were having, a, I should say, carpal tunnel, uh, ulnar nerve issues in their elbow area. He would be opening up nerve tunnels in their arms and hands. They would be getting rid of their burning, tingling numbness, and they would then go to him, demand, not demanding, but you know, there, he could see that there was something missing. The patients were even seeing it because they'd say, you know, doctor, I, I've got this burning, tingling numbness. You got rid of it. I'm excited. This is great. My arms, my hands, they feel fantastic. Now, can you do something for my feet and my legs? And he'd say, well, that's, that's called neuropathy. And really there's nothing you can do. You either kind of live with it or you take medication because he's trained like everybody else, but it challenged him. They had the same symptoms, just in a different extremity. It challenged him to think, why do you have to treat one extremity? different than another. And that's what I challenge you with. 
Why do we do that in medicine today? So what he did, he did, he did some very basic science research with rats, and then he started doing these procedures for people with diabetic neuropathy. And lo and behold, he was helping them. And so that's what I was trained to do. And therein lies the story. It was really the public demanding or asking him about, is there a potential to help me that way? And he was bold enough, smart enough, and had the creativity and courage to step away from the crowd. And so I started following him. And now, like I said, seven years ago, what happened was we discovered these two other tunnels. And we're going to go through these now in this diagram. But once these other two tunnels were addressed, we started to see, and this is incredible, that we were helping people that had restless legs. So here we go. What are the three original tunnels? So you can see tarsal tunnel is down inside the ankle. On the top of the foot is a deep perineal nerve tunnel. It's a small nerve tunnel there. And then up high on the leg, right below the knee on the outside, is a nerve tunnel called the common perineal nerve tunnel. So those three were all that we were dealing with. And then again, seven years ago, we started to do procedures on the superficial perineal nerve tunnel, about two-thirds way down the front of the leg, and then also on the soleal sling. There might only be a couple dozen doctors in the world that even operate on this. It's back up in the upper calf, just below the knee joint. Okay, when we started to look at this, again, the, the one, the, the uh, red colored, <laughs> Uh, nerve tunnels are red on the screen on, on the placement of the leg and the wording is in red those are the primary nerve tunnels that help get rid of your restless legs and we may need to do procedures on all three or maybe just two of those three and that's bottom line that's what we're doing so what is a procedure for nerve compression the involved nerves are opened to relieve the pressure on the nerves. You probably know someone that has had carpal tunnel surgery. It's just the same idea. You may find yourself sleeping better and backing off drugs within the first two days. This happens a lot within a couple days. Here's something that I'm very excited about. It's called intraoperative nerve monitoring, the objective non-biased proof. So what, what do we do here? We measure the function of the nerves while we are doing these procedures to document improvement further confirming compression is the cause. This was probably about seven or eight years ago. I got so excited. This was probably more excited. No, I wouldn't say that. As excited as seeing your, your children born. Maybe not quite there, but, but you know what I mean. It was a very exciting professional moment for me because what is what we were doing is taking the concept that is used for the upper extremity, like uh, ear, nose, and throat doctors use this device, and applying it to the lower extremity. So I was really the first foot and ankle surgeon to start doing this. And the point I'm trying to make is, for a while, I'd been opening up nerve tunnels for people with neuropathy, and they're getting better, and they would tell me, but I had nothing objective that was showing me. And this test shows you in the operating room within minutes that they're getting better. And that's so exciting for you to see uh, as a doctor that you're, you're having this big of an effect. Okay, so we measure the ability of the damaged nerve to send a signal into the specific muscle that it supplies. Measurements are done before and after the tight nerve, nerve tunnel has been opened. The larger the waves that you see on the monitor that we use, the larger the signal that is going into the muscle, which correlates to improve nerve function. So here we go. Here's a before, and you can see the wave on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, and then look at the number. It, this is in millivolts. That's how much energy is transmitted into the muscle of the leg. We have electrodes in the muscles of these specific, and the specific leg muscles that this nerve uh, impulses into. And that's how much was going in, 44,945 millivolts. And then this is afterwards, went all the way up to 6,639 millivolts. Again, see how big the wave is compared to before. It's larger. Here's some more data to share with you. Again, this is in the operating room. Pre means before the tunnel is open. We test the nerve. Uh, and at 8.15 we tested. 8.26 we are done. We have already opened the tunnel. And you can see the difference. The PL stands for perineus longus. The TA at the top there stands for T 
tibialis anterior muscle and you can see these two muscles how much they improve from 4900 to 16,000 and from about 600 to 2000 and again folks this is within 10 minutes this kind of data is really confusing to the medical world because it demands a new understanding of nerve function and how rapidly nerves can repair. People feel better the next day or the day after that. And this shows you that their nerve is better. In fact, uh, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a surgeon. I have my specialty and I have my knowledge, but I'm not really a good neurophysiologist. So uh, there's a couple neurophysiologists. Uh, one of them's from the Ivy League school back east that we're going to probably put a paper together, hopefully in the next year, uh, with a new hypothesis as to why do these nerves recover so fast. So these these old ideas that you might hear like, well, it takes nerves six years, six months or a year. It's just not true, folks. It's totally not true because this shows you and our, our from our experience, the that patients are telling us this. And that's in terms of this kind of repair. Other kinds of repair may be different, but I'm talking about opening up nerve tunnels specifically in the lower extremity. And again, you can see the improvement over 300% with both of these nerves. So here it is, folks, objective data. This is what you are not hearing from your doctors. Within minutes, record improvement of your nerves. This tells you and me and the rest of the world that these nerve tunnels are tight, and that is the issue. They are the cause. This is so important that you get this. This is really the key part of what we're doing is patients are saying they're better and the data shows it too. So before we go on, we're going to share a case study here, but I want to mention something to you because some, for some of you listening, I, I think it's good to report to you some, you know, data about what restless legs, how, how it is so destructive to your life. So if you're a, a man and you have restless legs and you're listening to this presentation, there's a 39% chance that you could have an early death because of restless legs. A 39% chance. Now, that's data from a Harvard research study. Okay, so think about that. So if you get this wrong, think about what that could do to your life, your health, the fact that you can't sleep, the fact that you're so drained during the day that you can't exercise. Not to talk about how it can mentally affect you. You're exhausted. You could be depressed. You're just not the same with your loved ones. But if you get this right, this could be a different story for you. More sleep, more activity. You could be yourself again, having more intimate relationships with your family, and on you go. So it's amazing to me, and I think it would be to you, that hear that and how much restless legs affects you in so many ways. So let's talk about a case story. This is Lisa. She'd been struggling with restless legs for eight to 10 years. It was routine for her to get three hours of sleep per night. She had to stop hiking and exercising because she didn't have any energy. Over the years, I went to an acupuncturist, a chiropractor, general practitioner, neurologist, Lisa said. No one could offer me a solution other than going on medication, which I really did not want to do. But she did. She gave up and went on medication. I was constantly searching for a solution because it was not getting better. It was just getting worse. Finally, I was referred here by a friend who has restless legs because we had worked on him. He was in, very insistent that I come in. So here are her numbers before surgery or the tunnel was open and then afterwards. She went from 6,800 to 8,600. Within one week, she states she was 90% better and she had surgery on her other leg one week later with the same results. Now I sleep, she says. I'm off all my medication, and I sleep an average of seven hours a night. The next story. This is Bonnie. Well, Bonnie had incredible pain. She'd had this battle going on for 20 years. About 20 years ago, she started having the symptoms of restless leg. There were very few nights that she did not have symptoms. She was getting up, and, and she's getting up so much that only, she might have only had two to three hours of sleep combined at night. Bonnie recalls I went to a neurologist, a back doctor, a physical therapist, a chiropractor, holistic medicine doctor, an orthopedic doctor. Then I tried medication, got a training, went through sleep tests, etc. Boy, she she tried everything. I find I tried everything, she says, not to mention scouring the internet for remedies I could find. You finally just hit a wall where you start to accept 
that this is just your life. So here she is. In fact, this is her, uh, I mean, she, this is what she's saying like a year later. This is her intraoperative results. She went from 3,900 millivolts all the way up to 8,600. Huge improvement of her nerve function. Now, one year later, she reports, now on average, I sleep seven hours every night. I can work full time and sit at a desk without trouble. Now I'm back to walking, biking, and hiking. Just sitting down to read a book and going to the movie with my daughter without having to give up to get up and pace the back of the room is amazing. And that's her with her cute little granddaughter that she loves to go to movies with. So just pick up the phone, she says. You have to be willing to step outside the box and continue to try something else. This surgery is something that no one else knew about. And as a result, I struggled with restless legs for more than 20 years. Now I'm just, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around how my whole life has changed. So let's go back to this conventional medicine. I'm going to talk about the old way. And you're all so familiar with this, aren't you? Taking drugs, increase the dosage, and possibly if it's not effective, you keep increasing the dosage. And then the benefits may uh, diminish. And then there's, I think in some cases, there's a risk of addiction. I would even take a big bold step and say there's suicide going on for, for this folks. You know what I mean? It's that serious for some people. I, I'm reminded I just had a patient about two days ago. I think she'd come in or been to a presentation, but that's exactly what she went through. She came in, she's going ahead with procedures because she just kept increasing the dose, increasing the dose, and it wasn't even doing anything after a while. Or you can live with it. Some people do that. Iron, treatments, massage, cream, stretching and yoga. Keep it a secret. That happens sometimes. People are so almost embarrassed because they don't think anybody would will believe the suffering that they're going through. So they kind of keep it to themselves. And I'm sure some of you experience that yourself. You know these are band-aid approaches. Endless hours are spent searching for something, anything. So this is going to lead to confusion, frustration, and ineffective treatment. These treatments all act as band-aids, and you know that. And they simple, simply circle around the actual problem, which I've talked to you about. It's the compression. So see that frustrated man, and that probably is a symbolic of what a lot of you are feeling like. So the new way, I'm going to run through this quick. It's very simple. Have a lower extremity examination based upon a presentation of the results of, of, of our tests. Uh, there's, in most cases, a 90% chance that we can help you. It's a one-hour procedure on one leg. One week later, another hour-long procedure on the other leg. And this is what it looks like. A very thorough history, lower extremity exam, one-hour procedure. You wait a week. And then as long as the first leg does better, we do the second one about a week later. And you get your relief. Simple. And three months later, you still have your relief. Six months later, you still have your relief. Three years later, you still have your relief. Because I get asked that all the time, how long does this work? Well, so far, we see it works, you know, that long. It's, it's, it's something where we don't see that it tends to return. So a quick recap. Understand that there is a way out. Conventional medicine does not have the answers. And that the real cause of restless legs is nerve compression. It's really important that you understand that. So I'm going to talk about Shelly. But before I talk about Shelly, I want to mention another little fact that I've read about. So if you have restless legs and you're listening to this, 85% of you will relate by survey, another study I'm talking about, that it's having a very big effect, detrimental effect on your psychological and physical well-being during the day. I mean, you know that. That's probably pretty obvious, but it's only 15% of you would deny that. That's, that's another way to put it. And it reminds me a little bit of Shelly because Shelly's a, a sweet lady. She's a school teacher from Michigan, and she could feel that it was just affecting her with her family a little bit. And that was really starting to rub her wrong because she was focusing on the rest of the legs. It's very difficult when you can't sleep, you're exhausted, and to be focusing on others. Okay, a lot of you can relate to that. So she'd had restless legs for seven years. She was taking Mirapex, but still it was getting worse. She tried vein surgery, didn't work. She was greatly, it was greatly affecting her sleep, ability to sit in cars, go to movies, and it was starting to affect her family life. This is her before decompression, and then after the decompression, she says, my legs are so much calmer. Now I have to get used to this. Within two days, I was off my medication. 
she's funny because she was saying it took her quite a while to go to bed and just forget about it and go to sleep because she was waiting and waiting and anticipating something happening to her legs, but it never did. So she was surprised how little pain that she had from surgery. My dressing being slightly snug was the only thing that she noticed. And that's seriously, a lot of people do not have that much discomfort from these surgeries that we do. She is so glad if she took a leap of faith and came here. She was one of these patients, people that was up two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I think her story was, and found us and called us. Okay, so this is step number four, or shift number four. It's the courage to step away from the crowd. That's the fourth shift. Shelley, who we just talked about, she had that. It wasn't a big deal for her, but for some people, I think it can be. You must have the courage to step away from others that tell you there's no cure and who, though well-meaning, offer different medications and nutritional avenues or other treatments that do not address the cause or offer a real solution. This could include family, friends, well-meaning doctors, and members of support groups. Are you confident enough to look at restless leg syndrome in a way that you've never heard of before? Are you ready for this? And finally, shift number five. Allow yourself to see a real, a new, real option. And a little bit of what I mean by that. It's like if you want to grow in as a person, sometimes you need a mentor. In this case, I'm saying follow somebody that's leading the charge, my goal is to eliminate as much as possible restless legs on this planet. I really think this is going to grab on at some point and this is going to become commonplace. It's time that more people knew about this. So follow our lead. So to reverse restless legs, you need to be educated in the real way to relieve your symptoms. You will need to follow my path. I'm a physician who educates sufferers that, re- that nurse traveling through tight areas of your legs are the cause of your symptoms and that therein lies the problem. We have peer-reviewed research to back this up. Simply, all it means is other doctors have to review these papers that we send in so that they're bulletproof. It's the real deal when we report these to you. We have testing that is done on the nerves before and after pressure has been relieved on these nerves to show that nerves now function much better. Patients are saying they're better, their nerves are saying they're better, and the machine is saying they're better. So uh, next would be research on the lower extremity for possible cause has been almost non-existent until now. I've successfully opened thousands of nerve tunnels, vastly more than other surgeons, and as such, I've continually improved my techniques to the point that I'm now even pioneering minimally invasive approaches for these procedures, because a lot of people would like to see very small scars. Well, we're working towards that. We have a seven-year history of relieving restless leg symptoms, just like yours. For you, this can really mean relief of your restless legs. So... Remember earlier on I said that I promised you information on how you can get your night back and get six to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, a restful uninterrupted sleep night after night, how to get back the energy that you had so that emotional and physical well-being is vastly improved. Also, how to re- greatly reduce or even get rid of the medications you're taking for restless legs so that you're not suffering from weight gain and negative side effects and possible addiction. How you can feel normal again, not dreading long, long played plane or car rides or trying to sit uncomfortably through a movie. How not to have to worry or be embarrassed anymore about dozing off in public places or worry about your inability to focus and be effective at work. I've actually seen a couple of you do that in the clinic. <laughs> you're, I'm talking and you're almost dozing off because you're that tired. Or else I'm that boring, I'm not sure which, but... I like to think the former. <laughs> uh, what do you need to do to rid your lo- your life of restless legs? You need to, and we were just going through uh, the shifts. Understand there's a way out. Know that conventional medicine does not have the answers. Understand the real cause of restless legs. And then have the courage to step away from the crowd. And finally, allow yourself to see a new, very real option. So now we have given you a choice. And another final statistic, and you can pull a lot of these up on the internet, but I want to talk about this. And I think this is also from Harvard. But did you know, of those of you listening right now, if you have severe restless legs, it's already advanced your life five years. In other words, you're five years further down the road 
than anybody else in your age group? Do you understand that? Simply because of the detrimental effects, both physically and psychologically, that this has. Many of you, in fact, another statistic is 50% of you that have gone to sleep labs for evaluations are suffering from mood disorders or depression. So this affects you both psychologically and physically. Lack of exercise, lack of sleep. It reaches very broadly across your physical and, and mental being. So you have to remember this, that if you get this wrong, you can continue down the present pathway. You can continue down the conventional medicine pathway and continue to listen to conventional medicine, continue to keep searching, round and round you go. Or if you get this right, you can have restful nights. You can have the ability to do more hikes and walk and bike, like Bonnie, for instance, to do the things that you used to do and to be more involved and intimate with people, family and friends, and maybe even perform better in work. It's now your choice. Now that you have a choice, my team and I have set aside some time in the next 48 hours to speak to you personally about how you may be able to rid, get rid of your restless legs. You have seen all, we have seen all types of people with all types of challenges, and in the vast majority of cases, we are able to offer real help. On this phone call, we will discuss with you the steps you will need to take to reverse your restless legs. The cost is absolutely free. However, to qualify for this limited time offer, you must understand this is only for people who have severe restless legs. This is for people who acknowledge that not all patients can be a good candidate, for, but from our experience, approximately 90% are. And this is based upon our initial phone conversation with you and is also then later reconfirmed with our initial examination and testing. This is for people who acknowledge that there could be a 10 to 15% chance of no change in your restless leg symptoms. If this happens, the results tend to be neutral virtually 100% of the time, meaning the procedure will not cause symptoms to get worse. If this is you, I invite you to book a session using the link below this video. Why are we doing this? First, we want to let you know that we have another option. I think that's so important. We want you to be aware of this because so many people are not. As a doctor, I've been passionately involved in providing relief first by doing decompression surgeries for neuropathy, and more recently for restless legs. It's time you should know. It is my personal opinion that because of big pharma or big drug companies and what some people call big box corporate medicine, they're the ones that are dominating what you hear. This new information will take too long to be discovered for most of you. I made the decision to use this medium, the digital realm, to teach to reach people like you. But first and foremost, our patients are demanding this. They've encouraged me to use whatever means we can to get the word out. Well, as I say this, I'm reminded of a very cute little lady from Oklahoma, Donnell. Donnell was her name. She, came, she had 30 years of this, folks. Four, 30 years of restless legs. Came in, did one leg, a week later did the other one. Had very fast relief, you know, 95% better. What she had just experienced was... 90 days of a restless legs free life. She had had this for 30 years before that. So she looked so different. It was very transformative for her. She had a lot, a lot more energy on her face and her eyes were twinkling. But she, kind of being the ornery senior lady that she was, kind of got into my face about this. She was very upset because it had taken her and her husband so long to find out about this. Very frustrating to them. So, again, that's a reason, that's a motivation for me to, to reach out to you so that more people understand that you do have this other option. So, a couple more things before we close. We want you to understand that we help people both in Canada and in the United States. And if you reside in the United States, it's important that you know that we help people both with and without insurance. You also need to understand that we're located in Colorado. So you would have to come here to have this done. And I know right now you're probably going, oh my gosh, I have to come to Colorado. Hey, it's a beautiful place to come to. You really won't need to be here that long. You go home and you're done with this. 
and we have a great team that helps you with the logistics. Don't worry about the details. At the end of this webinar, you're going to be able to sign up for a no obligation consultation and we can figure out all those details for you. Just get on the phone, make the appointment, and we'll talk to you. But our team does this all the time. They're very good at it, and we're very enthusiastic to want to help you. You also need to understand that, again, there are very few doctors that even do these procedures, and very few further that are very proficient at these. Because I know this, I help train these surgeons. You also need to understand that we do not use general anesthetic. In most cases, this is done with local and IV sedation. It's outpatient, and you're able to walk away. You go to wherever you're staying that day, and within two to three days, many people feel improvement, and most people are very surprised at how little pain and discomfort they have. So for the majority of you, if you have severe restless legs, this is definitely a very viable option. As I said before, Around 90% of people that we talk to on the phone and then come to our, our clinic are in a good position for this to reverse your restless legs. There may be a few of you that are listening here at the end where your restless legs aren't that bad. And I under, totally understand that. Maybe you're able to take minimal medication or whatever you're using. It's working for you. You're not affected that much. You're actually sleeping fairly well. And that can be the case. There's a wide spectrum of severity from very mild to very severe. But I'm talking right now just to you folks that have very severe restless legs. There's sort of two phases of this I, I'd like to talk about when, it talk, when, when I'm speaking to you about, I guess you call it the craziness of restless legs because when you first get this and it's very severe, and we talked about that earlier, you begin to wonder about yourself. You lose confidence, you begin to wonder, is there something wrong with me? Because doctors don't seem to get this. My, my own spouse doesn't understand it. Well, meaning relatives don't understand the suffering I'm going through, so there must be something wrong with me. And a lot of you go through that. We hear that all the time. There's a second phase, though, that I'm learning about, having done this now for a while on the Internet. There are many of you that are listening to and comparing yourself to other people. What I mean by that, and that's that's kind of dangerous in a lot of aspects of life, and especially with restless legs, because you're seeing on the internet, maybe with support groups that, well, I use, so-and-so uses magnesium, and, and by gosh, it really helps me. I can sleep now almost every night. Somebody else might use a very low dose of a certain medication, and again, it helps them. But understand these folks have more mild cases of restless legs, and there's a, there's a special place for that, and that's just fine. So don't compare yourself, because there are 47 options to treat restless legs that I've counted up. So it's kind of dangerous for you with severe restless legs to keep shopping around and trying a lot of these things because when it's severe, these are truly, my way of thinking, are band-aids. As I said before, because we have found the, from our research, what's going on with these nerve pathways. Our research shows it, and there's more research to be done to even verify this further with other mechanisms that I'm looking into. But understand that, folks, and that every Every month and every year that you procrastinate and you don't make up your mind and do something about this, it's having a very detrimental effect on your health. I hate to be the bare bad news, but remember, this can cause early death in men and women, we're finding out, because of the general effects of this lack of sleep and what it's doing to you. And I'm just one doctor. I'm one doctor that funds his own research. I'm not a big academic institutional place that is kind of funded by big pharma. And I want you to understand that. And I think that's why you're hearing about all this other stuff, dopamine, iron, the drugs, because guess what? There's corporations that can profit from that. And there's a place for pharmaceuticals. I think they're great in many ways. But in this realm, they're looking at the wrong area in many, many cases. You need to get that. So please, at the end of this, we want to talk to you. Don't worry about the logistics of getting here. We help people all the time. We have people from six years ago that are still restless legs free. So in closing, I'd just like to say that if you're watching and listening to this on a desktop, you'll see uh, a page pop up at the end. It's a scheduling page, and you can sign up there for your consultation with both me and my staff. If 
you're on a mobile device, please go to www.restlesslegsgone.com. That's www.restlesslegsgone.com. And when you get there, you'll see a scheduling page where you can set up a time to speak to us. So uh, I want you to understand that now you've got an option. You really do. And if you're sick and tired of dealing with this, you really have an excellent opportunity that you can live a restless legs free life like so many other people that we've helped that you've seen on this webinar and hopefully you can be one of them. So uh, we look forward to speaking to you.